It is very likely that you are not going to be a successful artist. You're not going to be a successful writer, a successful actor. No one's going to see your writing. No one's going to see your art. No one's going to see your performance in a play. No one's going to hire you. You're never going to be able to make the feature film that you wanted to make and you're not going to be able to direct it or distribute it. And that sucks. That sucks. But I think that's statistically the case. But I'm telling you that that doesn't mean that your work is valueless and worthless. I think there's a lot of pressure on people, especially like young creative people, um, to prove that your art has value and that your work has worth, especially because it's like a profession that is like traditionally seen as like really difficult to make money off of. And so because there's like the stigma around like a starving artist, I think, it, it puts like a lot of pressure on you to like prove that like you're not that stereotype and also to prove I think also like just ego wise to prove to yourself and to others that like you're not an idiot for like choosing to be an artist but the reality is that life is like really hard and stuff doesn't turn out the way you want it to but that doesn't mean that everything went to waste and it doesn't mean that you wasted years of your life on something that didn't come to fruition. That's not true at all. This is also just a reminder to myself because I'm a young artist, I'm a young actor, creative person. I come from like very traditional parents, right? And they really value like financial stability and like, you know, career stability as they should, you know, I, I think I didn't like that growing up, but I think I'm trying to understand it more. So. I didn't get to pursue art in like university, right? But I think I only recently accepted that that doesn't mean that like my work is valueless, even if it doesn't, I don't get to do it as a career, you know? I think that because there's like this pressure to like prove yourself as like a creative, like if you feel like you really have to like be famous and for your, your work to be seen by a lot of people. Um, but that's not true because like growing up my dad my dad really wanted to be an artist when he was young um he didn't get to do that he's retired now he never he never sold his work he was never like a full-time artist he didn't grow up with money so he didn't get to pursue that right and i think a part of that like it does worry me because it makes me feel like well what if i don't get to be a full-time artist as i said um but i think also partially it's not that bad right like he still enjoys art he's retired like i remember Growing up, honestly, he doesn't do a lot of art like in his spare time, but like I remember like sometimes sometimes he would, right? And I remember just some of my like earliest memories are like of him doing little drawings of like me and my mom, like little pencil drawings on paper or like him doing pa little paintings of like our garden. And he didn't do them often, but these are like memories that really stick out to me. And I remember seeing him draw and I thought he was so talented and he was so good. And I thought he was like the best artist ever growing up you know and he always told me the story of like how growing up like the first time he was on a plane he always told me the story so the first time he got to be on a plane right because he like didn't grow up with money the first time he got on a plane was because he won a ticket to thailand because he was in like an art competition and the first prize was a plane ticket to thailand um and i remember that story all the time and obviously he didn't sell any of his art he didn't he never showcased his art to like a lot of people. There weren't like a lot of eyes on his art, but I just remembered growing up and thinking he was so good. And so like, even if you don't get to like exactly do what it is that you wanted to do, right? It doesn't mean that your art is worthless. Like it's not a waste of time if like, you know, life is difficult and like, you know, circumstances are not ideal, like completely ideal. Or if you're not like a famous creative person, uh, maybe your work doesn't influence thousands of people but like it's gonna influence someone right like it his art influenced me right like maybe maybe too much because my parents were like did not want me to do art um they did not want me to do art professionally but whatever this is unrelated to the video so like i didn't get to study art either right because my parents were very wanted stability for me and i actually now i do appreciate it but i think i still do art in my spare time right and i made peace with it and i think I'm, ma I'm making peace with it. I am making peace with it. That's more realistic. The shift in mindset was really helpful because I think for like a long time, 
like especially as a teenager when you're like growing up and you have like a chip on your shoulder i like really resented it and i like really like seriously considered like completely quitting like i was just like i'm gonna give up on art um i really wanted to be like an animator i really want to work for like disney and dreamworks and i'm not gonna get to do that because i didn't study animation and i don't really animate but i think i like only like recently learned that like there are like a million ways to like make art and like be happy and like to be a successful artist there are like a million ways to like be successful as like a creative person because i think you succeed if you enhance your life and your experience and you're able to like you know enhance the experience of like other people and like just improve your life i think there's just like there's something to be said for like doing it just for like the sake of doing art and even if like one person sees something you do and they get a laugh out of it they enjoy what you do and they they touch it touches some like one person i think that's enough right even if that person is you right maybe you enjoy it um a lot of art comes from pain you know a lot of like emotions like a way to like express yourself you know that's why so much music is sad that's why we listen to a lot of del rey and cry right because it's like something that you relate to even if like the only person that like will hear your music is yourself you know that's still important you, you still need like an outlet for these things right and the second point i want to make was that you also don't have to be good at art or like your passions to like do them you know like it's i think it's completely fine to like not be good at these things and like not make money from them i would even venture to say like you don't even need to like actively be improving your skills like i don't even think you need to like actively try and like improve your drawing or your music or your writing i don't even think you have to do that i think it's like perfectly fine to just do all of these things like kind like really badly like objectively badly and i think that's still valuable because i think people forgot that these are like just baseline human activities right like singing and dancing and like making little art and like little pottery sculptures like people have been doing that for like literally centuries right like have you seen those like paintings and like caves of like bears and shit? like people didn't need to do those i mean like they probably did them for like documentary like documenting reasons but like also they didn't really need to do them there are like other ways to document and record keep you know so like these are just behaviors these are just like natural human behaviors and i think like especially like in the modern day we all treat them as like skills that need to like be honed and improved and like capitalized on to like make money from and honestly it's very good in your like good for you if you can do that and you can make your living off of that because don't we all wish to do that but like also if you don't get to do that that's okay because the point of doing these things is not to like get good at them it's just the point of doing these things it's just like it's something that people like to do and it's just something that we do you know like eating and and shitting and you know and peeing and going to the bathroom and like sleeping you know it's just one, like one of those things that like people like to do you don't have to like be good at it to like enjoy doing it and to like find value from it right like you know how like kids growing up like kids do drawings all the time with like little crayons and they don't care if they suck they don't care if their drawings suck they don't care if like the little the wobbly sun in the corner of the page looks bad right they just do it because like it's fun it's fun to like color and like draw a dinosaur or like a bird right i think you grow up and then you like learn shame and like embarrassment and like comparison so you're like oh well my drawing of this stick figure doesn't look as good as that girl's drawing of a stick figure and then i think you stop doing it the poet ross gay said something about art making as having been something that's been like colonized by the idea of time so what i mean by this is like a lot of artists now have the thought process that they want to make something that like lasts forever right and like will live forever and outlive them so it puts a lot of pressure on like artistic people to make something that's bigger than them you know larger than them and like once they once they pass on this art will like last forever right and that's a lot of pressure but his point was that you should treat like poetry and like art making in general right you should treat like art making as like a bit like gardening right you should treat it more like gardening as opposed to like a big solid thing that lasts forever so you know how like when you do like gardening right like if you plant flowers and stuff you pour like all your time and your attention and your blood sweat and tears into this thing even though you know that it's not gonna like outlast you it's not gonna live longer than you like it's probably not gonna live like a couple of months right it's like winter is gonna come around it's gonna snow and then everything is gonna die like all the plants are gonna like 
all of the plants will wither, right? But no one ever says that like, oh, you shouldn't plant anything because it's gonna die in a few months anyway, right? No one says that because that's silly and we all know that that doesn't make sense because it's inherently valuable to like grow plants and to garden, you know? No one ever says that these things are useless and I think you should treat making art in the same way, right? Like, just because it doesn't last forever doesn't mean that it's a useless thing to do, right? Everyone would say that like gardening is a very beautiful, very valuable thing, right? Because it's inherently valuable and worth something. I think like in my own life as well, my like relationship to like making art and like writing and drawing and like even just like posting little YouTube videos, right? I think in general it got a lot better when like you started to learn to like see it as just something that you like to do and like not to have it as like a metric of your own self-worth obviously it's easier said than done because i have like an instagram and i'm always looking at those numbers we all lie and we say we don't like the numbers we don't look at the numbers but like we all look at the numbers right but i think <laughs> it's a good thing to like keep in mind that you know that you shouldn't do that right like i know that that's not a metric of my self-worth um and it's just something you have to keep reminding yourself i think especially because you're taught from like a young age to like see everyone else as like your competitor right and you're taught like perfectionism and shame and embarrassment right um me especially again because i come from a very traditional chinese background and i'm personally just like personally in my personal life i'm very shy and i'm very insecure about my own skills right i get embarrassed very easily um i think even though I've been doing like drawing for so long, a lot of the time I'm still embarrassed about my drawings and self-conscious about them, even though people like tell me they like my art. Um, so it's really hard to like turn off that part of your brain. I think also that stops a lot of people from like trying new skills because I think, have you ever noticed how like when people are like, oh, so do you like doing like, do you like to cook? And then people are like, yeah, I like to cook um not not well though i don't cook well yeah i like to dance but i don't dance well i like to sing but i'm not a professional singer like you always have to like put a disclaimer at the end of whatever it is that you're talking about to like try and guard yourself from embarrassment and shame and like i do understand why people do it i think it's like a humility thing because you don't want to like seem like you're like oh yeah i like to cook i like to sing um and then like you're trying to like not have people see you in that way but then i think also at some point it's like it is kind of just like like wounding yourself first so that like other people can't hurt you as much you know what i mean i think even like advice where it's like you know you don't have to like see other people as your competition you should only be trying to improve yourself it should all be about self-improvement i i don't even know how i feel about that sometimes because i think obviously yeah there's nothing inherently wrong with like improving your skills but also it's like sometimes sometimes your skills slide backwards you know like i think improvement is like not linear and like a lot of the time you know like what if you injure yourself or like you just make something that's kind of whack sometimes we just make sometimes <laughs> sometimes we make things and they're, they're just kind of whack they're just not good and you tried something new and it's not nice um so it seems like if you're comparing yourself from your past it will make you it'll make you feel like oh damn i'm like actually sliding backwards and then that's also equally as demotivating as like comparing yourself to like another person like a different person you know what i mean so i i think sometimes you don't even need to necessarily be in competition with yourself that's what i mean by like it's fine to like make art that's like objectively bad because it's just something that you've, it's something that you like enjoy doing you should just try and do it like obviously i understand that it's like really hard to not compare yourself to your past work i have not learned this i'm literally just saying it i have not learned this at all because i do this literally 100 percent of the time i still do this even though like objectively i know that i shouldn't do that but i think like when it's like really when it gets like really bad it is so demotivating to the point where like you will just stop doing the skill for a while and then and then you can't even like identify with whatever it is that you say you like to do like if i'm like oh i'm an artist but i'm so demotivated by comparison from with others or with myself that i don't do any art then like you can't even call yourself an artist you know what i mean because you stop doing the skills so much because of the fear and the stress and the damage and the insecurity and the shame that you can't even you can't even do that because you're stuck it's like it's like a vicious cycle right because 
you don't do it and then you don't actually get better at the thing and then you don't do it because you're not good at the thing and then it kind of spirals right and then you can never get out of the the hole you're in like a hole and it's like at the end of the day you didn't create anything valuable right everything is empty like the sheet is blank you know you didn't write anything you didn't make any music like the thing is blank we're just like worse than not doing it i think like you need to like recognize that you don't need to punish yourself for your own mediocrity and like you don't have to punish yourself for like making bad art you don't have to punish yourself for like not being good at whatever it is that you're doing i think also that stops you from like trying anything new right because i think especially like nowadays I, i've noticed like recently a lot of people like refuse to like try a new skill because like the barrier to entry is like so debilitating because you're like oh my god i'm not immediately good at this new skill that i've never tried before i guess i'm just terrible i'm not gonna do it again because also it's like really embarrassing right because like a lot of people are like really good at things because they started when they're like three or four years old you know like oh my god oh my god i know like I pers- like, in my personal life, I know a girl that, like, went to the Olympics, and, like, she's obviously very good at her sport, right? And she probably started when she was, like, five or six, so it's like, if I did her sport now, I would feel like an idiot, right? So I wouldn't do that, and I would get embarrassed, and I wouldn't stop, but, like, also, that's a terrible way to live, because it means that you can never start a new skill beyond, like, once you were a child onwards. It means that, like, now I have all of- I possess all of the skills that I will have forever until I- die because I'm not allowed to do anything new because I'm not going to be as good as the person that started when they're five but like that's really silly you know like we objectively know that that's a really silly thing right I mean I tried to not do that and I think I, I, I'll give you an example of like the why you shouldn't do that so I recently like in the past I think three years or so I started doing like acting so I never did acting growing up as a kid um growing up as I never did acting growing up right um, I know a lot of like people they start really young and they did a lot of like theater they did like the high school plays I didn't do any of that and obviously that makes it really embarrassing especially because I'm shy so why would you do acting it's like a lot of public speaking but I'm really glad I did I, I did it the first time I did it was when I was 19 so I was already in university um, and everyone else was really good and I was like well sh there's no way that I'm gonna be good at this because I'm f old and I ever tried you know I didn't I don't have any training but, like I'm really glad that I pushed myself because I think it like it actually like not to be dramatic i think it substantially increased my quality of life not just because it like improved my ability to like speak to other people and be confident but also it proved it proved to myself and maybe it will prove to you that like you can get to like a very considerable level of like skill in something even if you think that it's like impossible to do at like it when you're older like because I think when you're older also you have you're better at learning things that's why like i personally disagree with the fact that like adults are always like oh i can't learn a new language when i'm old because i didn't do it as a kid um i'm gonna make a different video about this because i have a lot i have a lot to say about this particular subject actually but the point is like it's it is very possible to like get to like a level that you personally think is like quite acceptable in your skill and to not feel embarrassed about it even if you start really late and the threshold is never as high as you think it is, you know? Like, you can improve a lot in, like, a couple of months or, like, in a year. And now I'm, like, signed to, like, an acting agency, you know? After, like, a couple of years, you know? Now, I did, like, National Youth Theatre recently. Um, so you can progress a lot faster than you think you can. And you can find a new passion later in life. And even if you're not good at things, it's okay to do them, you know what I mean? I think it came with the recognition that you don't have to, like, trap yourself in a little bubble right i think growing up i identified as being very shy and then for a long time i didn't try anything that would like kind of break away from that so like acting would be directly contrary to my identity as a shy person right so i never gave it my energy and then i realized oh actually i'm quite good at this thing um and it's because if you put like an arbitrary label on yourself it makes it really hard to try new things and you really shouldn't do that the point of this video is life is hard and it's not going to turn out the way you wanted them to but you also don't need to like make it even more difficult on yourself by putting like a bunch of insurmountable expectations and objectives on yourself because ultimately uh, life is gonna go the way that it wants to man um and i think that 
anything that you enjoy doing now is like very very valuable i think like any creative thing is good so like it could be like coding it could be coding or like programming like those are actually very creative things right because you are making something out of nothing that's what i mean right like people like to make things out of nothing you can make like a minecraft world and i would be very impressed because i can't do that you know what i mean like that's very creative that's great that's like one of, that's like literally the most popular game in the world right and i think it's not i don't think it's a coincidence that the most popular video game is minecraft which is like a game where it's like literally just a sandbox creative game i don't think that's a coincidence right so you should find something that you enjoy that will tangibly create like an artistic thing and allows you to like kind of use your imagination and i think that's valuable even if it's like for your own like mental sanity i think it's valuable um and just remember that like art is fun art is meant to be fun if you like to improve if you'd like to improve and it makes you feel good then do it if it makes you feel like you're wallowing in, in self-comparison and you can't do anything then don't improve objectively bad art is still good art because it exists in the world and not just in your mind because you're stuck in your little bubble i'm gonna stop talking now because i'm losing my breath and i need a glass of water goodbye